guys come down here. Alright, so we are going to make our velouté today and we should have time to make our bechamel today too. So, we're going to make our roux. We're going to be making our velouté. We're going to be making it with uh, we're making it with a blonde when we do our bechamel, though, we're going to be making it with a white roux. But this one's going to be a blonde roux. So when we're making our blonde roux, we're going to be waiting until we get that nice... We're going to be waiting until we get that nice um, hazelnut smell to it. Not the... Uh, burnt popcorn? Yeah, not the burnt popcorn, or just not that just straight buttery smell that we get with a white with a white roux. Not the burnt popcorn smell with the brown roux. Because we're also still making a velouté, which is going to be a white sauce. So... Go ahead and make, melt our butter. Yes, my. Do we let our chicken stock boil or no? Yeah, I just need to get them thawed. Okay. I'm gonna check mine quickly. Okay. So. Mine's just melt right butter, up. melt butter. All the ice is melted. And if it's thawed, what do we do? Just turn it down. Turn it back down. Yeah, yeah, just turn, yeah, turn, turn it down, turn it off, move the pan to the side. You guys will most likely have to transfer your stocks to a. Bam Marie or something, yeah, because right. your pot, your saucepan is also going to be the one you're making your velouté in. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> it is the mother sauce that's what we're making. Okay. So there's five mother sauces: velouté, bechamel, espagnol, um, hollandaise, and tomato. Man, I am my brain is fried today. Mm. So. I think it's all the butter. No, I've had a huge headache today, so I've just been a little out of it. But anyway, um, we've got two ounces of butter, so these are four ounces. I just split in half and have two. Eventually, when we start using the one-pound butter blocks, you're going to have to um, actually scale it out. Right now, half of that's two ounces. So I'm going to add two ounces of flour. I've always got a little bit of backup of each, just in case I mess up a bit. Because if, if I need, say, if it's not dry enough, I can always add more flour. If it's too dry, I can add more butter. And then from there, I can just fix my sauce from there. So, get it all mixed up, just like when we made our roux. Get that wet, sandy consistency. Now, white roux, this is white roux. It's already made. It's gonna smell like butter, and it's just gonna be pure white, nothing going on. So, with our blonde roux though, we need to actually cook it a little bit. We need to change the color up just a hair. It's still gonna give us a white sauce. Um, it's just a little darker than the white blue. Yeah, it's gonna be just a little darker than our bechamel. Bechamel is gonna be really white. So, um, what you guys will need is don't go, don't, don't run off. <laughs> you will need two ounces of butter, two ounces of flour by volume. Uh, one bay leaf. This is four ounces. I usually fill up the four ounces because I like having extra laying around because I know then I know half of this is going to make my two ounces. One bay leaf. And you guys need to get individual salt, salt and pepper. pepper. So this way you guys can start learning how to season properly as well. Two, uh, two ounces? Yeah, I just grabbed this little two ounce one. And we can save these. That's what I had on the half sheet tray was the morning's ones, but um, Chastity decided to not let us have that opportunity. <laughs> So, we got a nice wet sandy consistency. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of, and you can smell it now, we're getting kind of a nutty smell, and that's what we're going to want. I like to smell these things. It smells really like, it's like a mix of like cheese and stuff. That's what I'm getting so. from now that I've got my nuttiness going on, I've got my stock to the side. I've got four ounces of roux, and if we follow the ratio for a nice medium consistency, I'm going to need 20 ounces of stock. Now, as you're, as you're putting your stock in or any of your liquids into a roux, make sure you're mixing as you go. If you don't, you're going to have a big clump, and that's not going to be a good situation. This is a six ounce ladle. I thought I was going to grab the four ounce pan. I am out of it. So, 12, 18, like a little bit of yep. And a little bit more. 
You guys can grab a four ounce ladle. I've got four ounces in there. All right, now to thicken this. How does this now? Now it's just runny. How does this get thick? It boils. It boils. Yeah. Once it gets hot, the starches combine together and create the thick liquid that we're looking for. We're looking for what's called nappe. And what was that, James? What was nappe? Remember? the back of the spoon, you can run your finger through it and it's able to maintain its size. Yep. When I can coat the back of the spoon, yep, I run my finger through it and it should be, and the sauce stays the same. Once we get to that consistency, I'll show you. So yeah, now we gotta wait till it comes to boil. So I'm gonna crank mine up. When it comes to flour-based thickened sauces or soups, they will burn on the bottom. There's a lot of extra protein, a lot of extra, uh, if you guys that they're boiling, just take them off and put them on the side. Um, but, Roux thickened soups and sauces burn easily. There's a lot of extra proteins in there. Too, just they like they like to be heavy and they like to float to the bottom. They like to stick to the bottom and they like to burn on the bottom. This is how you can easily burn something. Now, if you do any cream-based uh, soups or sauces, those are less likely to burn. There's not a lot of uh, product in there to uh, that wants to sink to the bottom and burn on a cream sauce. You're going to season to taste. So it means this is our your first example of seasoning to taste. You're going to put some salt in there. You're going to put some pepper in there. You're going to taste. I'm going to walk through mine. And you're going to do it yourself. But it's a skill that eventually takes time and experience to get. Do you think we'll need the small bay parties or do we think we'll need the big ones? You'll need the bigger ones for this. So uh, you guys can see it's, I'm getting up to about two. I'm getting up to about two eight, two hundred eight, two hundred nine degrees on my sauce, and it's starting to thicken up. It's becoming much more viscous. Once I get to a boil, all my starches will fully have formed, and I will have a light to medium consistency because I did add extra, little extra sauce or a little extra sauce, a little extra stock. I'm sorry, as soon as it comes to boil, chef, do you take it off the flame? You just turn you turn your heat down and make it go to a simmer. So you guys can see there's a lot of you guys can look over. You can see all the activity that's happening, the bubbling. Mm -hmm. That's my boiling. I need to turn this down to a simmer, so that means turning it, just turning your burner down. Um, so like on on your guys's, um, it's going to be a oh, simmer on your guys's burner is going to be a one. A one. Okay. Yep. Then I'll give you a nice simmer to where you guys can walk away, go on break while it's simmering for 20 minutes. So now I've got my consistency. I'm going to take my spoon, which is now just a spatula. And I'm going to take my finger, and I'm going to run it through the back. And it does That's nappe. And it does smell as good. Yeah. Yeah. If this is a light consistency. We're one a medium consistency, but after this simmers for 20 minutes, I'll have that medium consistency I want. And I have a pure, true nappe. This right here is just light. You can see it's kind of breaking apart and coming off the spatula. It's like a bit. Yeah, it's more, it's more glazing it rather than a thick glaze, what we want. So, it's not a true nappe, but we'll get there to eventually. So, I'm going to add a bay leaf. It's going to help me give that uh, anise, uh, that licorice uh, flavor to it. It's going to help develop its own complex flavors, what the bay leaf's going to give me. I want to add a light pinch of salt and a light pinch of pepper. Now, with experience, I would do a lot more than this. But for you guys, I want you guys to do a little bit because you guys need to learn to season beforehand like this. You want to eventually learn to season, almost do a majority of your seasoning right now because the salt and the pepper are will have time to envelop and develop inside of your stock soups, sauces, braises, uh, and whatever product you're making, you need to season beforehand. If you try to finish, do all your seasoning at the end, everything's gonna be too peppery and too salty, it's gonna be too sharp, it's not going to be very good. You need to do it, uh, learn how to start doing it at the beginning, because you're gonna have really good developed uh, flavors. A good way to really figure this out is to make rice, season rice beforehand, and then have a batch of rice you season afterwards, and then taste the two, and it's like a nine day difference of understanding that principle. That's actually what I was going to ask about. Yeah. Like, it's rising when the rice starts to a little water, I just put like, salt pepper in it, which is beautiful. You know? yeah. Is that how it's supposed to be done? Like, you need to do it when you, add the, when you add the water for your rice, that's when you add the seasoning. Oh, okay. I just haven't been doing it that way. Well, that's what I'm talking about. So. I don't so. Know if you're doing your rice. I did that with my chili powder, but it, wasn't it was still really bland. Flush. Flush. But that's that's just because you haven't figured out how much salt and pepper really takes. So what you guys, you guys will get a kind of a um, idea that's day. So I've 
made my I've made my roux. I've added my ingredients. Um, I've added my stock. I've got my consistency. I want to turn this down and just let this simmer. I need to let it simmer for 20 minutes. The reason I need to simmer for 20 minutes is like I have raw flour in here. I mean, I've cooked it a little bit inside of my roux and it's been cooking in the liquid for about a few minutes, but I just want to give it a good 20 minutes. Uh, that's going to allow that raw fla that raw flour flavor to cook out and that raw flour flavor will be gone. If you, just, you do not let it have enough time, you can taste it, you're going to taste just raw flour in there. And that's no good for our sauce. So I'm going to let it simmer for 20 minutes. You want so to do this in? I want you guys to do the exact same thing I did. Chef, when you add your um, your liquid, is it? So our sauce has simmered for 20 minutes. Now we can see it has become thicker. There's actually some small clumps. That's the reason I say suggest to always come back and stir it every so often. But that's okay. We can get rid of those by straining it through the chinois. And now that I've simmered it, I told you guys it was a light consistency beforehand. But now you should have a nice medium consistency. That's why I talk about nappe. It's not falling around where I've cleared it all. And that's nappe. N-A-P-P-E. Nappe. So, I'm going to season it. Or not season it. I'm going, well, I'm going to season it. But I'm going to taste it first. I always taste your food. Taste that. Taste it. Get a spoon. Taste it. Be careful. Not the phone. Just oh. Oh, I'm not. Double dipping. <laughs> no double dipping. Oh, yeah, no. We don't like double dipping. <laughs> <laughs> so. Wow. So, you guys taste it. It's very bland. All you can really taste is you can taste the vegetable to the chicken stock. You can taste a little bit of the chicken and some of the roux. But it's very bland. Even with that little pinch of salt and pepper. Well. Yeah. In real terms, I would have seasoned it a lot more with salt and pepper, but this is also going to be a learning experience for you guys. You guys need to learn how to season. So, the way to season and how to gain more experience with this, season with salt. That's a lot of salt. Yep. And a little bit of pepper. And it's about a three to one ratio, three to one salt and pepper. If that can help you any at all. I want to get that taste in So, now I seasoned it. Now taste this. I want you guys to see. That was just a little bit of salt and pepper. It's not fully done yet. You guys understand why I need some salt and pepper for today. You can kind of see how the salt and pepper has kind of enhanced the flavor a little bit more. I'd rather not be Just. I think you drink a lot. Huh? Hold on. That's better. You can see that's better. It's not good yet, but it's better than it was before. That's the whole idea of this. So that means we got to season a little bit more. And this is how seasoning happens. Okay. That's how it occurs. That's the reason if you guys watch the TV shows and they're like, taste, 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 taste. This is how you get there. You season your food. You taste it. Is it not ready yet? No. Do it some more. I like it. You guys, this is how you work with your dishes. You season, you flavor, you taste. You season, you flavor, you taste. This is how you make sure you get to the right point. And eventually you get there. Now if I wanted to do this, now you can see I'm very... Try this one. You, now you guys can tell that I'm very close. You can taste that how how far it brought us from very little seasoning to more seasoning. Yeah. Now, yeah. if I have it perfectly seasoned, is there a stage past perfectly seasoned? Yes. Yes. Over -seasoned. yes. It's called over seasoned. It's called over salted, over peppered. It's called more ruined. Huh? <laughs> ruined. It's called oh, ruined. ruined. <laughs> well, it's really easy to mix. <laughs> it's easy to mix. It's, it's uh, with sauces like this. Great. It's easy to mix. All I have to do is add more stock because it's un. It has no salt, it has no pepper. So, this is near perfect. This is where you get very finessey with it. You can just add finessey. Honestly, I thought it was good with the second. <laughs> and then we do a little bit more. I mix it in. I gotta make sure it's hot too. You gotta make sure your salt and pepper does actually dissolve into your sauce. Did you still leave the bay leaves in there? I will eventually take that out. Yeah, but that drains out pretty easy. Then you're gonna do a final seasoning. There you go. That's the final product.
sorry. What we call 100% done velouté sauce. And that's just that's just to show you guys what salt and pepper does for food. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a few of these for my fish. Does everyone call it different though? Because like when I when you do yes. like the second um, spicing, yeah, you... it's gonna be completely different. Some of you are gonna have different taste buds. Uh, Ellen's <laughs> gonna have different from, from a lot of us. Ashlyn's gonna have different from us. Can I go for, um, for her extracurriculars? Um, so, everybody's going to be a little different. That's the thick. GoPro, stop. Stop recording.